Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Matt and in this episode I'm going to tell you how to use dead batteries to check for, well, dead batteries. And I know what you're thinking, what? Yes, precisely, let me explain. I do a lot of home automation videos in which I show everyone how to take advantage of random devices and a lot of them are battery powered devices. Coin cell battery powered devices specifically. Which means I've got a lot of batteries which I need to organize and make sure I don't use weak batteries to start pairing process which often gets me in a lot of troubles because if you use a battery that isn't really good you're gonna end up spending 30 or more minutes trying to figure out what is going on. And I did use the multimeter in the past to try to get the voltage of individual batteries and order them in some sort of clever way. Inside my box I would always take full batteries for my testing However, that would quickly get ruined by me not being careful enough with the mocks and uh, mixing everything around. There must be a better way, right? And since you're watching this video, it means I actually got a solution. Now first, let's talk about batteries and what constitute a dead battery. Even though it says on the tin that this is 3 volt battery, it's not exactly true. This is a nominal voltage, however, when the battery is full, the voltage is much higher. In a case of 3 volt battery, the coin cell battery, that can go as high as 3.3 volts. So it's about 10% higher than what it says on the tin. So let's mark it somewhere in here. That's our 100% for the coin cell battery. The same applies for the drain. What we consider a drained battery or dead battery is when the voltage drops below 3 volts, 10% below 3 volts, so anything between 2.6 to 2.7, this is what we would consider our battery to be drained or dead. So when the battery is in use, the curve of the battery voltage would look something like that. It wasn't until recently when I was going through the datasheet of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Those are really nice microcontrollers, which one very unique behavior that separates them from the likes of ESP or Arduinos. Now they're capable of creating a voltage reference from as little as 1.8 volts, which means you will have a 3.3 volt IDC reference to play with, which is brilliant for my use case scenario because Let's face it, those batteries are, well, 3.3 at start, and they only go down from there. So I can take advantage of this and actually power my dead Raspberry Pi Pico with, well, dead batteries. But that's actually just on paper. Let's build a test project and see if I can commit any extra time towards this project to make it successful. I have a small Raspberry Pi Pico board extension kit which is very handy for prototyping and that's what I'm going to use. It will break out all the necessary pins for me so I could take advantage of the breadboard attached to it and start connecting the components. I'm going to start with my OLED display which uses four wires and connects to the I2C um, created on GP2 and GPIO3. Another thing that I have to connect is obviously a pin which I'm going to use to monitor or measure the voltage of my battery, which in this case is connected to GPIO28. To prevent the pin from floating, I also have to pull it to ground, so I'll add a small 10k resistor to it. But lastly, I just have to hook up the power and I'm using VSYS and ground to power up my Raspberry Pi Pico. This way you can take the minimum of 1.8 volt to get started and to, well, it's going to be working correctly, including internal reference. But one of the things I haven't anticipated is the fact that, well, I could accidentally reverse the polarity and, well, kill my script in a process. So I'll have to find a workaround for that. Fortunately, the solution is pretty simple. It's this small component. This is a diode IN4007 and it might be a slight overkill, but however, it works pretty well in this scenario. When connected to the circuit, it will prevent from the reverse polarity, essentially killing my script, and protect the circuit accordingly. The forward voltage of this is only one volt, so that's gonna be more than sufficient to work in the circuit, 
and we'll have to deal with a voltage drop across because it will skew our final result. But that's easily to fix in a software. And I realize there are other ways of actually solving this problem, but <laughs> it works surprisingly well and it only requires a single component, so I'm going to stick with this. By this point, everything was great apart from one quite annoying thing. I mean, I'm not going to use the breadboard to test this thing. I would like this device test prototype I've devised to be actually usable. And I had this idea that I could actually embed this device into my storage box for batteries, which would be great. So I've quickly designed a small prototyping, I don't know how to call it, a cradle, which would verify that my idea would in fact work and I can use this small gadget to actually just insert inside of my box and carry on using it as a carrying box and the tester in one. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Rotest program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Rotest program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? And a couple of iterations later and some hours in front of CAD correcting design, I arrived to my final iteration of this project that seems to be working. To program Raspberry Pi Pico, I'm using Thony and, well, let's get started. You're gonna need a couple of libraries and you can add those in uh, tools and manage plugins. Just type the name of the library and you'll be able to add it. Don't worry, I'm going to include those in the description. Now, once they are loaded, they are pretty much libraries responsible for handling, I2C display, and a couple of fonts, so I could have a control over the size of the font. That's pretty much it. First, we're going to start with setting up I2C display, which takes two pins. the SDA pin number two and SCL pin number three. And that's pretty much it. I also define the font, so I know that's gonna be visible. The next step is to actually declare our ADC um, pen, which is in this case 28, but you can also use 26 and 27 because they are also ADC pens. Lastly, I've set myself some information about the voltage definition, so I would remember how long is the battery, when the battery is low, etc, etc. In the main loop, I'm starting by obtaining the voltage from our analog pin. I'm performing the 16-bit read on that pin and if you wonder why do I have this uh, 65,536 on the screen, it is a 16-bit integer and uh, this is basically the maximum value. And if you remember correctly also that our internal reference was 3.3 volts, that's why we're gonna multiply it by 3.3 volts and then divide it by the, well basically what is a resolution of our measurement. And lastly, don't get confused about that plus 0.5. Do remember that diode I've added that had a 0.5 volt voltage drop? Well, we need to account for that and this is where the correction comes in. Lastly, it's just a matter of actually setting correct if conditions. 
So I didn't get overly creative in here, just in case you don't have a switch in line with your circuit, you can use that if voltage is below 1 to kind of display that there is either no battery in it or the battery is completely dead and all you can do is just recycle it. Now if the voltage is uh, above 1 volt, but below 1.5 volts, then the battery is truly dead and it's not going to be good enough for our box either. So in this case, the software will just tell you the screen it's well out of joules. But if the voltage is above 1.5, and I've used that 1.5 to actually give you a value of the battery rather than just uh, good enough for uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico, just in case you want to do something special with it. But if that voltage is above 1.5, then we can display the voltage on the screen. And I also created a small screen calculation that will calculate what is the percentage of the battery fullness because we are all used to reading the battery in percentages rather than the pure voltages, right? I really like the final design and its ability to do two things. First, to test both types of batteries, the 2450, the ones that are slightly bit thicker, and the classical coin cell batteries, the CR2032. They work pretty well, and even though the box is only powered by one of the types, because I've used a ready-made battery holder, that won't stop me because I always have enough of these batteries. And now I can simply test the batteries and figure out whether I should use the battery like this to power my Zigbee device, or the battery is too weak, but I can still repurpose it to actually power my box. And this way you are using dead batteries to check for dead batteries. I hope you like this project and it's gonna get you inspired to do your own. If you want to get a little bit more information just be sure to visit Element 14 Presents community where I'm going to list additional details like bomb list, uh, the script I've used and the 3D printable uh, parts that you can print yourself so be sure to check it out let me know what would you change in this project or if you are using the raspberry pi pico the w series with a wireless how would you take advantage of that i'm very curious to hear your thoughts on the subject i guess that's all from me for now it's time to organize my battery so see you then bye <laughs>